Hey guys, it's Wednesday, April 22nd, coming to you from outdoors because today is Earth Day. So I hope you guys have a happy Earth Day, get outside and do something. So happy Earth Day, let's take a look at our things for today. Reminder to take a look at those learning opportunities in socials or in the uh, homeroom part for the IXLs. Uh, whether it's mine and math or Miss Sommerfeld's in reading, but take a look at those IXL things. Um, and let me know if you want anything reviewed. I'll be happy to help you guys out. Free lunch and breakfast, head on up 11 to 1. Today's Wednesday, so it should be a nice hot lunch, so have that. Uh, my kids really enjoyed the Doritos that was in there yesterday, so make sure you hit up those free lunches. Uh, and also, if you have any questions, let me know. Please contact me. I love hearing from you guys, so please let me know if there's anything going on. Stay safe and stay home. For math this week, make sure you guys are hitting up the Prodigy, doing those, IXL, and I did post a Kahoot, so take a look at that. We also have reading, do those AR, 20 to 30 minutes, it's really important you guys keep that up, uh, as well as the IXL that Miss Sommerfeld posted. Social studies, take a look at that, answer that soccer question if you haven't already, so we can get that message sent to Miss B uh, Senator Buley, and she'll respond back and keep taking a look at the FIAT art guidance PE stuff, music. Uh, for those, I think uh, Mr. Warner's music hangout is on Friday. Just a reminder, these are the math things you should be working on IXL. Uh, letters D13, P5, Z1, BB3, and 10. Perimeter and area. Remember, perimeter is adding up all the sides. Area is length times width. So take a look at those. Uh, work hard on those. Keep up the good work for those of you that are doing that. The City of Ember is our story. Now we're reading. We've got Lena Dune. Sad day yesterday. Lena's grandmother passed away uh, as we read. So hopefully the story picks up. I promise it will. Uh, and they continue to try to unravel this mystery of what's going on in the City of Ember. Map again, and Pipeworks Building, that odd river that runs underneath the city. Uh, the vegetable markets here. We've got, um, uh, let's see here, where's Lena's house is right here. And we've got Dune's house is over here. So, got all those. Remember, this is the message that they're trying to figure out what it means. And chapter 11 is Lizzie's Groceries. Lena spent all day at Miss Murdo's house, which was just like theirs, only neater. There was one couch and one fat chair covered with fuzzy striped material and one big table. Only Miss Murdo's table wasn't wobbly like th theirs. On the table was a basket, and in the basket there were three turnips, each of them lavender on one end and, and white on the other. Miss Murdo must have put them there, Lena thought, not because she was going to have them for dinner, but also because they were beautiful. Lena sat sideways on the couch with her legs outstretched, and Miss Murdo covered her with a soft green, gray-green blanket. This will keep you warm, she said, tucking it around Lena's legs. Lena didn't really feel cold, but she did feel sad, which was in this, which is in a way the same. The blanket felt good, like someone holding her. Miss Murdo gave Poppy a long purple scarf to play with and made a creamy mushroom soup with potatoes. And all day, Lena stayed there, snuggled under the blanket. She thought about her grandmother, who had, who had been a, who had a long and mostly cheerful life. She cried some and fell asleep. She woke up and played with Poppy. The day we had a strange but comforting feel to it. Rest between the end of one time and the beginning of another. On the morning of the next day, Lena got up and got ready to go to work. Miss Murdo gave her a beet tea and spinach hash for breakfast. The singing's coming up soon, she remarked to Lena as they ate. Do you know your part? Yes, said Lena. I remember it pretty well from last year. I rather like the singing, said Miss Myrtle. I love it, Lena said. I think it's my favorite day of the year. 
Once a year, the people of city, people of the city came together to sing the three great songs of Ember. Just thinking about it made Lena feel better. She finished her breakfast and put on her red jacket. Don't worry about Poppy. I'll take care of her, said Miss Murdo as Lena headed for the door. When you come back this evening, we'll talk about how to proceed. Proceed, said Lena. Well, you can't live by yourselves. It's just the two of you, can you? We can't? Certainly not, said Miss Murdo sternly. Who is to take care of Poppy while you go off delivering messages? You must move in here with me. I have an empty bedroom, after all, and quite a nice one. Come and look. She opened the door at the far end of the living room, and Lena peeked in. She had never seen such a beautifully cozy room. There was a big, lumpy bed covered with a faded blue blanket, and at its head four plump pillows. Next to the bed was a chest of drawers with the drawer handles shaped like teardrops and a mirror attached to the top. The carpets of the floor were all different shades of blue and green, and in the corner was a sturdy square table and a chair with the back like a ladder. This'll be your room, said Miss Myrtle. Yours and Poppy's. You'll have to share the bed, but it's big enough. This is lovely, Lena said. You're so kind, Miss Myrtle. Well, said Miss Myrtle briskly, it's just common sense. You need a place, I have one. You go now, and I'll see you this evening. Three days passed since Lena and Dune had seen the man at the pipeworks, and they, haven't, they hadn't been any special announcements. So if the man had discovered a way out of Ember, he was keeping the news to himself. Lena couldn't understand why. As Lena ran through the city with her messages on her back on her back on her first day of work, it seemed to her that the mood of the people was even gloomier than before. There were long, silent lines at the markets. The knots of the people were gathered in the squares, talking in low voices. Many shops, more each day, it seemed displayed signs in their windows saying closed or open Monday, Tuesday only. Every now and then the, the lights flickered and people stopped and looked up in fright. When the flickering ended and the lights stayed lit, people just took a breath and walked on. Lena delivered her messages as usual, but inside she felt strange. Everywhere she ran, she heard the same words, like a drumbeat in her mind, alone in the world, alone in the world. It wasn't exactly true. She had Poppy, she had friends, and she had Miss Murdo, who was somewhere between a friend and a relative, but she felt as if she had suddenly gotten older in the last three days. She was the sort of mother herself now. What happened to Poppy was more or less up to her. As the day went on, she stopped thinking alone in the world and began thinking about her new life at Miss Murdo's. She thought about the, green, the blue-green room and the, planned how she would arrange her pictures on the walls. The one she'd drawn with her blue, pe blue pencil would look especially nice against it, and it would match the color of the rugs. She could bring her pillows from home and add them to the ones that on the bed, and she'd have to have six all together. But maybe she could find some old blue dresses or shirts and make pillow covers for them. The blue-green room, the orderly apartment, the meals cooked and blankets tucked all cozily at night, all this gave her a feeling of comfort, almost luxury. She was grateful for Miss Murdo's kindness, I am not ready to be alone in this world, she thought. Late in the afternoon, Lena was given a message to take to Lamping Street. She delivered the message and, as she was coming back onto the street, caught sight of Lizzie coming out of, out of the door of the supply depot. Her orange hair was unmistakable. Lizzie, Lena called out. Lizzie must not have heard her. She kept on going. Lena called again. Lizzie, wait! This time it was clear that Lizzie had heard, but instead of stopping, she walked faster. What's the matter with her? Lena wondered. She ran after her and grabbed the back of her coat. Lizzie, it's me! Lizzie stopped and turned around. Oh, she said. Her face was flushed. It's you. Hi. I thought it was... It did... I didn't realize it was you. She smiled brightly, and there was a distracted look in her eyes. I was just going home, she said. Her arms were wrapped around a small bulging sack. 
I'll walk with you, said Lena. Oh, said Lizzie. Oh, good. But she didn't look pleased. Lizzie, something has happened, Lena said. My grandmother died. Lizzie gave her a quick sideways glance, but she didn't stop walking. That's too bad, she said absently. Poor you. What's wrong with her? Lizzie was ordinarily so interested in people's misfortunes. She could be sincere, sympathetic, too, when she wasn't wrapped up in her own troubles. Lena changed the subject. What's in the sack? she asked. Oh, just some groceries, said Lizzie. I stopped at the market after work. You did? Lena was confused. She had seen Lizzie not two minutes ago leaving the storeroom office. Lizzie didn't answer. She began walking and talking quite fast. It was so busy today at work. Work was hard, isn't it, Lena? I think work is much harder than school and not as not as interesting. You know the same thing every day? I get so tired. I don't, don't you? Running around all day? Lena started to say that she'd like running and hardly ever got tired, but Lizzie didn't wait for her to answer. Oh, well, at least there were some good things about it. Guess what, Lena? I have a boyfriend. I met him at work. He really likes me. He says my hair is the exact color of a red-hot burner out of a stove. Lena laughed. It's true, Lizzie. She said, you look like your head is on fire. Lizzie laughed, too, and picked one hand up of, to fluff her hair. She puckered her lips and flattened her eyebrows, or eyelashes. She said, he says I'm as beautiful as a red tomato. They were crossing Torque Square now. It was crowded in the square. People had just left work and were lining up to the shops and hurrying along with packages. A cluster of children sat on the pavement, playing some sort of game. Who is this boyfriend? asked Lena. But just at that moment, Lizzie tripped. She had been strutting along in this beautiful, being beautiful and not paying attention to her feet, and the edge of her shoe caught an uneven place in the pavement. She staggered and fell, and she lost grip of the sack. It hit the ground and toppled sideways, and some cans spilled out. They rolled in all different directions. Lena reached for Lizzie's arms. Did you hurt yourself? she asked. But Lizzie went scrambling after the can so quickly it was clear she wasn't hurt. Wanting to help, Lena went after the cans too. Two had rolled under a bench. Another was going towards the children who were on their feet now watching Lizzie wild, wild spider-like motions. Lena picked up the cans under the bench and for a second her breath stopped. One of them was a can of peaches. Peaches, it said right there on the there was a picture of a yellow globe. No one had s knew or had seen a can of peaches in years. She looked at the other one and was just as amazed. Creamed corn, it said. Lena remembered having creamed corn once as a thrilling treat when she was five years old. There was a shout. She looked up. One of the children had picked up the can. Look at this, he cried, and the other children gathered around. Applesauce, he said. The children murmured, applesauce, applesauce, as if they had never heard the word before. Lizzie was on her feet. She, all of a, she had all of the cans except the two in Lena's hands and the one the child had picked up. She stood there for a moment, her eyes flickering back and forth from Lena and the children. Then she smiled, a bright, fake-looking smile. Thanks for helping me, she said. I found these on the black at the market. What a surprise, huh? You can keep those. She waved at the back of her hand to the children, waved again at Lena, and then took off, holding the sack by its neck so it hung beside her, banging against her legs. Lena didn't follow her. She walked home, thinking about Lizzie's sack of cans. You simply did not find cans of peaches or applesauce or creamed corn on the back shelves of the markets. Lizzie was lying. And the cans hadn't come from market. Where had they come from? There was only one answer. They had come from the storerooms. However, Lizzie had gotten them because she worked at the storeroom office. Had she paid for them? How much? Or how had she taken them without paying? Miss Myrtle had cooked a dinner of beaten bean stew for them that night. Lena showed her the two cans. She gasped in astonishment. Where did you get those? she asked. From a friend, said Lena. And where did your friend get them? Lena shrugged. I don't know. Miss Myrtle frowned slightly, but didn't ask any more questions. 
She opened the cans, and they had a feast, creamed corn with their stew and peaches for dessert. It was the best meal Lena had in a very long time. But her enjoyment of it was tainted in little by the question of where it had come from. The next morning, Lena headed for Broad Street. Before she started delivering messages today, she was going to have a talk with Lizzie. She spied her on half a block from the storeroom office. She was sawing along, looking in shop windows. A long green scarf was around her neck. Lena ran up swiftly behind her. Lizzie, she said. Lizzie whirled around. When she saw Lena, she flinched. She didn't say anything. She just turned and kept walking. Lena caught hold of one end of the green scarf and jerked Lizzie to a halt. Lizzie, she said, stop. What for? Lizzie said. I'm going to work. She tried to pull away, but she didn't get far because Lena had a firm grip on her scarf. Lena spoke in a low voice. There were people all around them. A couple of old men leaned against a wall, a group of chattering children just ahead, workers going toward the storerooms, and she didn't want to be overheard. You have to tell me where you got those cans, she said. I told you. I found them on the back shelves of the market. Let go of my scarf. Lizzie tried to wrench a scarf out of Lena's grip, but Lena held on. You didn't, Lena said. No market would just forget about things like that. Tell me the truth, she gave a yank on the end of the scarf. Stop it, Lizzie reached out and grabbed a handful of Lena's hair. Lena yelped and pulled harder on the scarf, and the two of them scuffled, snatching at each other's hair and coats. They knocked against a woman who had snapped, snapped at them angrily, and finally they toppled over, sitting down hard on the pavement. Lena was the first one to laugh. It was so much like what they used to do and for fun, chasing each other and screaming with laughter. Now here they were again, nearly grown girls sitting in a heap of pavement. After a moment, Lizzie laughed, too. You dope, she said. All right, I'll tell you. I sort of wanted to, anyway. Lizzie leaned forward with her elbows on her knees and lowered her voice. Well, it's this, she said. There's a storeroom worker named Looper. He's a carrier. Do you know him? He was, he was two classes ahead of us, Looper Windley. I know who he is, said Lena. I took a message to him on the first day of work. Tall with long, skinny legs, big teeth, funny looking. Lizzie looked hurt. Well, I wouldn't describe him that way. I think he's handsome. Lena shrugged. Okay, go on. Looper explores the storerooms. He goes into every room that isn't locked. He wants to know the true situation, Lena. He's not like most of the workers who plod along doing their jobs and then go home. He wants to find things out. And what has he found out? Lena asked. He's found out that there's still a little bit left in some of the of some of the rare things, just like the things in the rooms here and there that have been forgotten. You know, Lena, she said. There are so many rooms down there. Some of them, down out on the edges, are marked empty, but the led in the ledger book, but so no one ever goes there anymore. But Looper found out that there's that they're not all empty. So he's been taking things? Just a few things, and it's not often. And he's giving giving some to you? Yes, because he likes me. Lizzie smiled a little smile and hugged her arms together. I see Lena I see, Lena thought. She feels that way about Looper. But Looper's stealing, Lena said. And Lizzie, he isn't just stealing things for you. He has a store. He steals things and sells them for huge prices. He is he does not, said Lizzie, but she looked worried. He does, I know, because I bought something from him a few weeks ago. He has a whole box of colored pencils. Lizzie scowled. He never gave me any colored pencils. He shouldn't be giving you anything or selling things. Don't you think everyone should know about the food that he has found? No, Lizzie cried. Because, listen, if there's only one can of peaches left, only one person gets to have it, right? So why should everyone know? They just end up fighting over it. 
What good would that be? Lizzie reached out and put her hand on Lena's knee. Listen, she said. I'll ask Looper to find something good, some good stuff for you, too. I know he will, if I ask him. But before she had said, had time to think, Lena heard herself saying, What kind of good stuff? Lizzie's eyes gleamed. There's two packages of colored paper, he told me, and some cough medicine, and there's three pairs of girls' shoes. It was a treasure. Colored paper and cough medicine to cure sickness and shoes? She hadn't had new, sh new ones for almost two years. Lena's heart raced. What Lizzie, had if, what Lizzie had said was true. If everyone knew that there was still a few wonderful things in each of the storerooms, people would fight in each other trying to get them. But what if no one knew? What difference would it make if she had the colored paper or the shoes? She suddenly wanted those things so badly that she felt weak. A picture arose in her mind's eye, the shelves at Murdo's house stocked with good things, and the three of them happier and safer than other people. Lizzie leaned closer and lowered her voice. Looper found a can of pineapple. I was going to split it with him, but I'll give you a, a bite if you promise not to tell. Pineapple? That delectable long-lost thing that her grandmother had told her about? Was there anything wrong with having a bite of it, just to see what it was like? I've already tasted peaches, applesauce, and a thing called fruit cocktail, said Lizzie. And prunes, and cream corn, and cranberry sauce, and asparagus? All that? Lena was astonished. Then there's a lot of special things like that still? No, said Lizzie. Not at all. In fact, we finished all of those. You and Looper? Lizzie nodded, smiling smugly. Looper says it's all going to be gone soon anyway. Why not live, live as well as we can right now? But Lizzie, why should you get all that? Why you and not other people? Because we found it. Because we can get at it. I don't think that's fair, said Lena. Lizzie spoke as if she were talking to a not very bright child. You can have some, too. That's, that's what I'm telling you. There are still a few good things left. But that wasn't the unfairness Lena was thinking of. It was that just two people were getting things that everyone should have wanted. She couldn't think of how she should have... She couldn't think how it should have been done. You couldn't divide a can of applesauce evenly among all the people of the city. So, still, something was wrong about grabbing the good things just because you could. It seemed not only unfair for everyone else, but bad for the person who was doing it. Somehow, she remembered the hunger she'd felt when Looper showed her the colored pencils. It wasn't a pleasant feeling. She didn't want to have those things, things though, that way. She stood up. I don't want anything from Looper. Lizzie shrugged. Okay, she said, but there was still a look of dismay in her small, pale face. Too bad for you. Thanks anyway, said Lena, and she set back off across Torque Square, walking fast at first and then breaking into a run. And so tomorrow, we'll read Chapter 12. A Dreadful Discovery. So we'll read that tomorrow. And that is the, le the next chapter in City of Ember. I hope you guys are enjoying it. It's taking some twists and turns. So I hope you guys are enjoying it, making predictions on what you think is going to happen. Hope you guys have a great Earth Day today. And I look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow. Uh, and I also enjoy, hopefully, we'll see you for our Google Hangout tomorrow which will be at 10 o'clock. So I'll see you then. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.